Hey, family, you know what time it is. It's Thursday. As a matter of fact, it is Trillionaire Thursday. And time to talk about financial literacy. I promise you where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the Lord is in the place of liberty in our finances. He wants us to be free. He wants us to be free in our area of prosperity, in our area of dividends, in our area of business. And tonight I am excited that we have a great opportunity to be tutored, mentored, and challenged to go to the next place in our life financially. I don't know about you, but are you ready to add a zero to your life? Are you ready to be in a different tax bracket? Are you ready to have different conversations? Are you ready to capitalize in new areas and new territories? I hope that you are because we are getting ready to experience something absolutely phenomenal. I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons and I want to welcome you to Thursday night's trillionaire experience. On the behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, we are so glad to have you with us. I am getting ready to introduce our guests, but I want everyone who is a part, even right now, I want want you to tag someone. I want you to text someone. I want you to tell someone because we are getting ready to receive the tools, the practical tips to secure the bag. If you're ready to go to the next level in your resources, I want you to share this with someone because it is no fun if your homeboys can't get any. So we want to make sure that everyone that is connected to us in our sphere of influence in our circle has an opportunity to advance in the area of our finance. I have the privilege and the honor of introducing to you tonight none other than Dr. David Anderson. He came uh, a few months ago uh, for one of our men's experiences, and I promise you, I was absolutely mind blown by the brilliance, by the swag, by the drip, and by the conviction that this man had about seeing our people, black and brown, go to the next level in their resources. He is a real estate mogul. He is an advisor to celebrities and as well, can I share this with you? He is a follower of Jesus Christ. We are in for a treat. I want you to prepare yourself. Do me a favor. Why don't you get some wings and a notepad? Because tonight is getting ready to be so legit. I promise you, this is going to change your life for the rest of your life so you can experience the best that God has for you. Without further ado, New Birth family and friends, I want to welcome to the stage Dr. David Anderson. Thank you. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing tonight? All right. I'm excited. Um, it's, almost, it's been two years. It's unbelievable. All right, let's get these pleasantries out the way so we don't get a... Uh, we don't get uh, in trouble. Okay, so the talk, my talk tonight is about preserving wealth. Um, Pastor Jamal asked me to come out uh, and he wanted me to discuss about trillionaire, becoming a trillionaire. And so we did a whole dissertation about it. But I do want to first thank New Birth Baptist Church. I want to thank Pastor Jamal Bryant for entrusting us with the opportunity to come and speak on his platform. I also want to uh, acknowledge Dr. Michael V. Roberts, uh, Pastor Chris Boyd at Word of Faith, and also uh, Dr. George C. Frazier. And I'm, I'm in George Frazier attire with my Dr. George Frazier tie tonight. So um, if you guys don't know, my name is Dr. David M. Anderson. You can, um, I'm a real estate professional and serial entrepreneur. You can go to YouTube and simply type my name in if you're not familiar with my entrepreneurial antics and career. Uh, during the daytime, I'm the managing partner at the Real Estate Group Partners. Um, and you can go to the realestategrouppartners.com. 
That's the realestategrouppartners.com for more information about that. And then I also, I'm the financial commentator at Intercom, now Audacity, on uh, Wednesdays on 1380 WAOK during the Rashad Ritchie Morning Show. So you can catch us there um, at 8 a.m. and then later on in the evening at 8 p.m. on all social media platforms, including YouTube, Instagram, and the Fedbook. You can watch Wealth Wednesdays that I host and we deal with these exact issues that we're getting ready to talk about right now. Um, I have a boot camp coming up for some of you that really want to get engaged on, on understanding the strategies. And that will be May 15th and 16th. May 15th and 16th, we will be um, at the Marriott. The information for that is at Real Estate Management 101. Real Estate Management 101, okay? And that is uh, May 15th and 16th. So before we get started, I wanted to just give some books as references. And this will kind of um, outline what it is that we're actually getting ready to get into tonight. So some of us have uh, different levels of experience in, ed in our education. I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, well, Dr. Anderson, I, don't, I didn't go to college. I don't know what you're talking about. We can reskill ourselves right now simply by reading. So some books that are necessary, um, I'm going to recommend Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. It is the first book that I actually got an opportunity to read um, that kind of started me on this entrepreneurial walk. The, um, the second book, which is a very important book that I want to recommend, is called The Power of Zero. The Power of Zero. The gentleman's name is David McKnight. Mr. McKnight talks about living under the 0% tax bracket. And a lot of you know that our current administration is talking about 43% capital gains. We'll get to that later in the class. The Power of Zero has never been more important. The other book that I want to recommend because we will be dealing with IRAs and IRA strategies and investing in tax-free strategies, the Self-Directed IRA Handbook, or excuse me, this book is called Self-Directed IRA. It's written by a man, gentleman named Richard Deitch. He is the owner of Equity Trust Company. And the foreword is also written by a gentleman named John Bowens, a very important person in the talk that we're going to be giving tonight as it relates to strategy. John Bowens is the... Um, co-author of the book, Self-Directed IRA. And then the, fifth, the fourth book, excuse me, is a gentleman named Matt Sorenzen. Matt Sorenzen. Matt is a, a trust attorney out in Las Vegas, Nevada, wrote a book. It is incredible. It's called The Self-Directed IRA Handbook. So if some of the concepts I'm throwing out tonight are, you know, outside of your sphere, outside of your orbit, you need to kind of know what we're talking about you might want to go to Amazon right now and download some of these books. And then the final book that I'm recommending, this is for a lot of you guys that want to get into this investment space. You want to, you hit a dodgy coin, it's going crazy. Dr. Anderson, we got to get on the dodgy coin. We got to get the Ethereum. We got to get the Bitcoin. Hey, before you jump out there and start rolling the money on the black, you have to understand the fundamental, fundamental, excuse me, of investment. And those principles are outlined in a book written by a gentleman named H.M. Gartley, and it's called Profits in the Stock Market. Probably one of the most important books as it relates to investing that exists. Profits in the Stock Market. So you can all check those out. All right, let's get to our lesson plan tonight. Um, Trillionaire Thursdays is specifically for educational purposes only, all right? So we're not telling you what to invest in, I'm not a financial advisor, I don't purport to be, this is for educational purposes only, okay? Now that we got the disclaimer out here, let's get to it. This is a call and response. I know it's the pandemic and I don't have a full house, but it's okay because there's a lot of people online and there'll be a lot of people on YouTube that will watch this presentation for years to come. Trillionaire Thursdays class, I want you to repeat, and if you can put this on the board right quick, we must redirect our investments. So say this with me. We must redirect our investments. Okay, say it at home too. We must redirect our investments. All right, now this is important if we can go to the board right quick. The, the SAMA foreign holdings, okay? And what I'm explaining to you is this is called the Sovereign Wealth Fund. We're gonna explore what wealth really is. And in Saudi Arabia, the SAMA foreign holdings has over 514 billion in retirement. That is the, uh, this is the company that catalogs how much a nation has 
in their retirement. This is a measurement tool to find out how wealthy a nation is. And so what they'll do is a sovereign wealth fund of any particular nation will put out a report saying, this is what we have in our retirement fund currently. And the, the SAMA wealth fund has over $514 billion. Put a pin in that. The Kuwait Investment Authority has $524 billion in retirement. The Kuwait Investment Authority. The China Investment Corporation has $813 billion in retirement currently right now. $813 billion in retirement currently right now. The Chinese. Ni hao. In Abu Dhabi, our Emirati brothers and sisters in Saudi Arabia, the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority has $828 billion in retirement. They got that Arab money. The government pension fund, or what I would call the sovereign wealth fund, or what some would call the government pension in Norway, is the richest country in the world with the most resources in retirement at 1.3 or 1.3 trillion dollars in retirement. So we got to understand that. The Norwegians, our Norwegian brothers and sisters have 1.3 trillion dollars in retirement. They got a lot of bread. However, our current retirement situation in the United States and CalPERS, they are the entity that's charged with analyzing the, uh, the amounts of what people have in their retirement accounts. They've estimated that all of the retirement accounts in the United States is $392 billion. We're coming in at like 15 or 22 on the world stage as it relates to retirement. America is not prepared. But wait a minute. If we do some more research, we'll see that the annual spending power and we need to see this, if you could put this on the board. The annual spending power of minorities is $3.9 trillion. Listen to me, class. The Norwegians have $1.3 trillion. The uh, Chinese have $828 billion. Huh? The Kuwaitis have like $550 billion. But minorities, collectively, we're talking about black folks, Asians, Hispanics, when you put us all together and you call us a minority, we're at $3.9 trillion. But I didn't come here to talk to you about minorities. I didn't come here to talk to you about Latinos and Chinese people. I came tonight specifically to talk directly to black folks. Because black folks, listen to me now, annual spending power for African Americans is $1.4 trillion. Black people have $1.4 trillion in spending power. Wow. Not in retirement, in spending power. Wow. So when we talk about trillionaire Thursdays, <laughs> when we talk about being able to become a trillionaire, the concept of one person owning a trillion dollars is a Eurocentric concept. It is not an African or diasporic concept whatsoever. It has no community function to it. To have a trillion dollars means that a number of people need to be multimillionaires in the community. It's a thousand, ten million dollar folks, okay? Or if you want to call it uh, 10,000 folks with a million dollars. However you want to play it, it's a collective effort. It's not one person holding a trillion dollars. So when we talk about trillionaire Thursdays, we have to collectively understand our buying power, which we're already spending annually, and we have to understand how we can convert and or redirect those buying dollars into retirement funds. Let me say this one more time in case you didn't hear me. We must redirect our spending power that is $1.4, $1.3 trillion into retirement funds. Okay, Dr. Anderson, I hear you. I hear you talking, Doc. What do we do? Well, this is what we're going to do. We need to redirect our investments. How do we do that? Now, the question is not only how, but why. Why should we redirect our investments? Well, I had mentioned earlier that the current administration is interested, proposing, it's not official, but they're speculating and they're considering increasing the capital gains tax here in the States. So what does that mean? 
Capital gains tax, when we sell houses, I'm a real estate man, when we close, we got to pay like 21% on capital gains tax. Sometimes they got some stuff called short-term capital gains versus long-term capital gains, and it's, you know, a CPA question. But either way, the current administration wants to increase that number from 21% to 43%. What does that mean for black folks? That means, black people, if you're making a million dollars, you got to pay the Fed $400 and $30,000. Oh, I ain't making no million dollars, Dr. Anderson. Okay, okay, you made $100,000 last year. You gotta pay the Fed $43,000. Oh, I ain't gonna pay that $43,000, Dr. Anderson, to the Fed. I got to figure something out. You got to tell me something, Doc. You got to give me, some, give me that information, Doc. What do I do? That's why we're having Trillionaire Thursdays to answer that question. What do I do? How do I compete? How do I maneuver? What is the strategy to get through these challenging times? I would surmise that the current administration hasn't really snowballed us yet because they've drilled policy into the United States tax code. It's a matter of reading and it's a matter of implementing. And let me opine, as my brother Rashad Ritchie would say, if I may expound my brother, the U.S. current administration has deep incentives for savings in qualified retirement plans. What does that mean? That means that there are tax credits that you can receive for contributing into a qualified IRA. IRA stands for what? Individual retirement accounts. Watch where I'm going with this. Why is that important? Because remember, at uh, Trillionaire Thursdays, we're suggesting that we redirect our buying power into our retirement accounts. That's the lesson plan for tonight. We must redirect our buying power into our retirement plans. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly how this gets done. Now, if I have to pay on an obligation, normally when we get down to the get down, it's your income minus your expenses, and then there's something called AGI, which is your adjusted gross income. This is a CPA question. A lot of times, we just go and say, oh, I made this amount of money, $100,000. It cost me, whatever, $80,000 to make the 100. I got a net profit of $20,000, and so I got to pay taxes on the $20,000. And if the tax rate is 20%, then I got to pay that 20% of the $20,000, which is like whatever, 4,000 twice is, uh, or it's $4,000 on the 20. Hopefully my math is correct in that option. Now, if I have something called tax credits from contributions that I've made into my retirement, now I can offset that amount of money that, that I'm due to pay the Fed. Listen to me, class, and understand me clearly. Instead of having to pay the IRS and I'm not, I'm not advocating not paying your fair share. I'm not advocating that. But what I am advocating is that folks need to stop calling you, asking you for your baby's social security number so they can get an earned income credit to offset their tax loss when you can simply do one thing, which is, oh, I appreciate you, Brother Fonzie, which is contribute into their IRA. If you basically contribute into your IRA, then you can reduce your tax basis. And this is an opportunity that we really don't even take part in because we don't even know what the contribution limits are. We don't even know how this is going to benefit us. So we need to understand what are the opportunities in investing in retirement plans. It's very important. So there's two types of accounts, okay? Well, there's more than two types of accounts, but for this lesson plan tonight, we got two types of accounts that we're going to deal with, all right? We got to talk about managed accounts like Edward Jones and Smith Barney and Morgan Stanley and all of those other people and institutions that have to manage the money for black people because they feel as if black folks can't manage their own. And so they manage it for you. And a lot of y'all don't even check y'all statements. Did you know that the number one investment at Vanguard, that's right, I said it, Vanguard's number one investment is something called the CCA. That stands for, class, the Corrections Corporation of America. So black people, in essence, if you're at Vanguard, you're investing in your own slavery. You're investing in your own uh, uh, man's, like, prison complex. It's unbelievable to me that we will sit here and we will allow for Edward Jones and Morgan Stanley to manage our funds, but we don't ask no questions as to what you're investing my funds in. What are you putting me in? Oh, well, Dr. Anderson, I'm putting you in some softs and some hards and some emerging markets, and your fund is doing very well. Nah, dude, 
what you putting me in? Because I ain't down. I'm the entrepreneur Negro. How you going to invest my portfolio in the CCA? That's ludicrous. That's crazy. It don't make no sense. So on the other side of the coin, if you're not for that, and I'm not saying pull all your money out the market, I'm not saying don't go and place your funds with managed accounts. I ain't saying that. When money get big and it's above a million dollars, I'm of the notion it need to be in the managed account. But if you got 250 grand or 50 grand or 100 grand, I might be able to do better myself. This is, my, this is me think, talking right now. This is not financial advice. This is me talking. I can take 100 grand and turn 100 grand into a million dollars in 24 months because if I use the correct strategy, using self-directed IRAs, buying tax lien certificates, and having my capital gains go back into my IRA tax-free, then maybe in four or five cycles of transactions, I can get that $100,000 to the million dollars and then call Morgan Stanley or Edward Jones and talk about some cryptocurrencies in a portfolio. But now nah, we don't do that. We just sit there and we let the man tell us, we're going to put you in some emergent markets and we're going to do some softs and hards. And when really, they're putting you in what? The prison industrial complex. So we have to ask hard questions. Is this a managed account? Is this a managed fiduciary account? Or is this a self-directed IRA? Which one is it? And we got to be on point enough to know the difference, which means we got to start reading some books because, oh, well, Dr. Anderson, I didn't go to college. I didn't get to go to uh, Georgia State or Morris Brown. Listen, I didn't finish Morris Brown College, but I'm smart enough to know that if I'm shooting a million dollars over to Morgan Stanley, I need to know exactly what they're putting my money in. And can nobody come with an excuse of I didn't go to college because they got Google right now. And my mama told me back in the day they used to cut Negroes' hands off for reading books. And now you can say Google. And now now you can say Alexa. It probably responded to me saying Alexa hello right now in your house. And we can't read a book. We can't figure out what the power of zero is about. That's foolishness, man. So we got to read books. We got to understand what's really going on so that we can take control over our financial investments so we can figure out how to redirect our funds. Back to this lesson plan. Trillionaire Thursdays. How do we redirect our investments, Dr. Anderson? Come on, class. Okay. Here we go. The first vehicle that I want to talk to you about tonight is called an SEP. The SEP, and if we could put this on the board, thank you, is the Simplified Employee Pension Program. Now, why is this important? Everybody know about the OJ case, right? God bless Johnny Cochran. What I love the most about the OJ case, not that he got off, I love the most that the Goldman family was so upset with this Negro getting off, so upset with Johnny Cochran's intellect that they was like, we still got to get this Negro. So they took him to court. They won. It was like $50 million. Well, it was $30 million, and it's gone up with penalties and fees. It's like $50 million, something crazy. And OJ had about $5 million at the time in the bank. Before the verdict came down, Johnny Cochran had a meeting with OJ. And he said, yo, OJ, you need to move that $5 million through self-directed IRAs and buy some real estate in Florida because they got weird laws. Juice was like, all right, Johnny, what I got to do? So he set up and transferred those funds, made contributions into the self-directed IRA. And guess what, class? When your um, money is in IRA space, it avoids creditors. That's why Johnny Cochran was the man. Understand that. So Juice loads up the IRAs. They go to the West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, wherever they was in Florida, bought up them five houses for a million dollars each. And as soon as the the um, verdict came down. They went and appealed and tried to go, and it didn't work out. They, they got juice in the, um, in the civil court and got a judgment. And the first thing they did when they got the judgment class, what they tried to do? They tried to go put a lien on them houses in Florida, but guess what? Florida got ill laws, and they, they hold that up. And even though they didn't want to hold it up, they had to. What was the second thing they tried to go after on juice? The pension. They tried to go after OJ's NFL pension. The man's almost 80 years old, hadn't thrown a football in 45 years. He's still getting $25,000, $30,000 a month, and the Goldmans can't collect. Why is that? Because the NFL pension fund shields him from creditors. The question is, how much money did Juice put in the NFL pension fund for it to pay almost 50 years later, 30, 25 to 30000 a month? That's cold-blooded. Ain't nobody talking about that. We want to talk about the OJ case. We want to talk about how we feel. OJ need to go sit down. He don't need to be on the golf course in Vegas. He need to be doing this. He need to be doing that. 
black America needs to be celebrating his financial genius. And if he's not the financial genius, then we need to celebrate the financial genius of Johnny Cochran, who gave him that information so that he can still live life, living his best life on the golf course on YouTube. Self-simplified employee pension. Oh, well, Dr. Anderson, my job don't give me a simplified employee pension. Of course they don't. It's up to you to have a simplified employee pension that's self-directed. Ain't nobody job giving you that. That's power. Ain't no job giving no black people no power like that, financial power. Get out of here with that. So we got to understand what are these contributions. Dr. Anderson, what are the contribution limits for the simplified employee pension? Well, class, get this. You can put up to $57,000 up until May 17th for 2020 into your SEP IRA. You can also contribute and do two contributions and contribute $58,000 into your SEP IRA for 2021. That's a total combination of $115,000. That means for all you millionaires out there that did two, three million dollars last year, and now you owe the Fed 200,000, 250, and you gotta figure out how to reduce your tax obligation and go back and try to um, um, bend five years returns and all this crazy stuff, you might wanna consider putting 115 grand in that SEP IRA and using those contributions to reduce your tax liability to the Fed. That's the thought. Woo! Where's the gong? We need the China man with the gong. Boom. Solo 401k, don't stop here now. The solo 401k with a Roth component. They don't talk about this at the Georgia State School of Business. This is imperative because a lot of us say, oh, well, Dr. Anderson, you can't have a pension and the solo 401k because you can't have two IRAs that are similar or like kind. Well, wait a minute. A lot of you entrepreneurs don't have one stream of income. What entrepreneur you know that just got one thing going on? That's crazy. George Frazier told us we got to have multiple streams of in income. In the Bible, they say Solomon had seven streams, minimum seven streams of income. But we still subscribe to this Eurocentric idea of finance that we go into a job every day for 30, 40 years and getting one check. And the Bible's telling us we got to have a minimum seven streams of income. What are we subscribing to? Are we listening to the word or are we listening to the man? I'm still trying to figure that one out. On the solo 401k with the Roth component, we can put on the Roth side, the Roth IRA is the tax-free side class, follow me now, William B. Roth, Google that, $19,500 as of May 17th. If you can get it in there, you can put $19,500 from 2020 on May 17th. Then you can also put up to $37,500 on the 401k side. Well, what's the difference between 401k, Dr. Anderson, and Roth? Well, Roth is tax-free. 401k, tax-deferred. 401k, the government is still your partner. So you want to understand that. You can also still contribute for 2021. Another 19.5 and another 37.5 and or 25% of your income on the employer side. So if we add all that together, and you'd have to kind of move expeditiously on that, but that's another $114,000. I know Cass is crying right now. They owe the Fed, Feds is starting to ramp back up. The Republicans tried to gut the IRS out, and now the current administration is trying to put some life into the IRS from the collections and all this type of stuff. People owe like 500,000, they call in the office, they're crying, they're like, man, what do I gotta do? I don't know what to do. And I'm like, if you're practicing Roth IRA constellations, right, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to worry because then your, your capital gains or your profits, at least, should be transferred while you're getting that money, while you're getting bread. That all should be transferred into your retirement accounts so that when it's over, right, you, you want to go and just get on your boat and do whatever you want to do, take your kids and your wife, you can do that. You can't do that. We getting 60, 70 years old, working at Walmart on Wesley Chapel Road. What is that about? 80 years old as a greeter. That's crazy, man, because it's poor planning. And, it's, and it's, this ain't even poor planning. This is like some type of mental issue because we got the capital to do it. We, our buying power is like 1.4 trillion. Come on, y'all. Stay focused on the lesson. The next vehicle that I want to get into is called a ROBS. ROBS stands for, if we could put this on the board, thank you, Rollover for Business Startups. Rollover for Business Startups. So somebody asked me, Dr. Anderson, can, uh, before this product came out, 
You used to not, you used to could not take rollover funds off the market to invest in your business that you worked in. It was called a prohibited transaction, all right? So if you're looking at the IRS, you wanna know where we're going from. The IRS says that you can use retirement funds for two things, okay? You could use it to invest in real estate, more specifically tax lien certificates, and you can use it to invest in business. So what does this mean? This means a lot of people don't wanna do real estate. Some people just wanna buy a business that's pre-existing, that's already up and running, and that's making money. And in fact, there's a lot of businesses out here right now that people have had 30, 40 year runs on, and their kids don't wanna take these businesses over because they got a feeling about their daddy putting his life work into this building. So they hate this building, they hate how this building smells, they don't want nothing to do with the building. But this dude done put his whole life's work into this building, and this building is pulling 100, 200, $300,000 net profit monthly. And these kids don't want it. This dude is tired. He want to go hang out with his wife. His wife is tired. She might have a COVID. So guess what? The man got to make some decisions. And sometimes men have to make real decisions. Men have to sometimes sell. And so there's a lot of opportunity right now. But guess what? Cats can't get to the opportunity. Why? Because they don't got the bread. And because the banks is tripping and because they was giving up all the money on the PPP loans, and now you gotta actually show some tax returns now so Negroes ain't getting what's due. So now, what do we do, Dr. Anderson? Well, hey, wait a minute. If somebody had a Rob's account, they could definitely roll funds over from the market into the Rob's account and then make an investment into this pre-existing business that's already cash flowing. But why ain't people telling about that? Why ain't people going to bizbuysell.com? Y'all on Craigslist looking in the free section trying to find uh, metal and stuff to take to the recycler. Why you ain't on biz buy sell looking for businesses that's already pre-existing and there's been a change, there's been a bankruptcy, there's been a sickness, there's been a mismanagement, there's been young people, kids that don't respect what their parents have built, that don't have understanding, no understanding of legacy. They don't want it, they want to throw it away. So it's there for you. Somebody built free equity for you. Somebody built free cash flow for you. And you can't figure it out because you've been brainwashed to go to Bank of America and apply for a PPP loan that is not going to be given to you. Economic injustice is real. They are still redlining. If I picked my house up in Southwest Atlanta and took it to Johns Creek, it would be $5 million. But it's in Southwest Atlanta and I can barely get a half a million dollars for that. Why is that? That's because anything under I-20 is lower because that's where black people live. So in my investment strategy, I'm not just trying to get paid, I'm trying to recapture lost equity that I'm redue as a black person living in America. So I'm not putting my investment dollars in the West End, no. I'm not buying in the AUC, although we own a block on the Beltline in MLK. I'm going to Forsyth County, I'm going to Hall County, I'm I'm going to North Fulton, I'm going to Milton, the same areas that they have my ancestors hanging from trees on, I'm going and putting my money on black so that when I go and kick them out their house, that equity is coming back to me tenfold because I can't get that equity out my house in Southwest Atlanta. And because I'm not choosing to live in Milton, I'm choosing to live in Southwest Atlanta because I choose to be around black people that act pretentious and that act like they got money but really don't because I choose to live there. Come on, come on, come on. I don't want to be in Milton. I don't want to have to worry about, oh, I got to get to my house because it's getting dark. So I'm on a mission to go and strip equity out of Milton, strip equity out of Forsyth County and put it in my IRA because I'm doing my reparations. Understand why we are here. We're not here to miss the flip. We here for equity. Understand what we do, black folks. The next product that I want to talk about is called a Roth IRA. This product has to be one of the most powerful vehicles on the planet. And the reason why is because William B. Roth and his genius in 1973 or whenever they um, motioned to start the Roth IRA, this is a true tax-free environment. The ROBS, the SEP, Parts of the solo 401k are in a tax deferred environment. This means that the government is my partner. And at any time, there's speculation, there's a big thought process moving around the internet that says if we're ever out of money and we ever need money, the government can go in and rob everybody's retirement accounts. 
I don't know, maybe, maybe not. That's why you got to be in alternative markets, and that's definitely why you need to have a self-directed IRA. But the Roth, if you can get money into the Roth, it grows in the Roth tax-free. Now, let's just think about this. They say we're not prepared for retirement. Huh? This is, these are the numbers. I just put a copper's report on your behinds. <laughs> All right? We truly, at $382 billion, are not prepared. So, Dr. Anderson, my brother, I hear you uh, opining, my brother. I hear you uh, 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 pontificating ad nauseum, brother. Uh, what is it that we can do? How can we uh, uh, change the uh, economic deficiencies in our retirements? Uh, notion me this. If your child is one years old, and you open up a Roth IRA for your kid. Oh, well, Dr. Anderson, you can't open up an account, a Roth account for a child. He got to have earned income. Well, hey, listen, my kids is cute. If I take a picture of my kids and put them on a magazine, I'm getting a check. If my kids go make some lemonade and put it on a, a website, they getting a check. If them kids get a honey bee factory and put it in the backyard and the bees make honey and they pollinate and you turn the switch and the honey flow fills up their jars and they take them jars to church and they sell them jars, them kids is making earned income. What's so hard about us making sure that our kids have earned income to put in their Roth IRAs when they one years old? Do you know what compounding interest does for the maximum capacity in a Roth, which is $6,000? If you qualify, with, or all you need to qualify is earned income. Do you know what $6,000 looks like? Compounding interest every year of that kid's life until they're 18? When that kid turns 55, he's going to have $5 million. Why are we not talking about this? Why are we in school learning from dated information on books that took 12 years to make a curriculum? I know exactly what it takes to make a curriculum. I'm building curriculum right now, and curriculums have to be perfected before they're institutionalized, or even schools even think to be able to teach on these curriculums, which means that business schools, that's right, I said it, business schools like Harvard and like Georgia State School of Business are teaching you, your kids, on dated information from institutions and teachers that ain't never made a million dollars. And your kid is going out, taking out a student loan, paying interest in fees on a person who ain't never filled out no K-1s, don't got no ROBS, don't got no Roth, don't got no HSA, don't got no SEP IRA, don't know nothing about being able to invest in cryptocurrencies, let alone a self-directed IRA, but your kid is taking out student loans to pay for an inferior curriculum taught by somebody that ain't never made no million dollars and ain't making no payroll. And that's our educational system as it relates to business in America today. And we keep going for it as black people. Unbelievable, man. What's wrong with us? But this is what it is. The Roth IRA gives us an opportunity to change all of that. The Roth IRA gives us an opportunity to put our kids first. My kids got Roth IRAs. My kids is paying their teacher through their own ESA account right now because they in transactions. So this is what all of our kids need to be doing. It ain't just Anderson's kids. Everybody's black people kids need to be having ESA accounts and Roth IRA accounts because we need to be taught how to move. We not being taught how to move. They are intentionally directing us into a different direction and we ain't moving nowhere. Whew. Hit the gong. Where's the Chinaman? Boom. I'm gonna hit it myself. Woo! There was my man. <laughs> the Roth IRA is also incredible because you can convert. Somebody say convert. So the SEP IRA if we contribute to 2020 and 2021, we'd have $115,000 $115, in pension funds. But Dr. Anderson, you know pension funds is, uh, is controlled by the government because the government's your partner. Well, hey, man, you can convert. You can do what's called a mega Roth IRA conversion. It's a CPA mathematics problem, but you can pay the difference on those tax dollars and you can stuff those tax dollars into your Roth IRA into what they call a mega Roth conversion. It's complicated. I know it's the first time you heard this. We'll talk more about it at the boot camp. 
We'll have experts there that can help you, because I know some of y'all black people got bread, especially black women. Black women got so much money, it's unbelievable. And you know what's funny about black women? They'll be in the house with their husbands, their brothers, their boyfriends, dudes, whatever, and they won't say nothing. It'd be $5 million sitting in that account, and guess what? They not telling you. You know why? Because you playing video games. You eating Fruit Loops in the middle of the day with a big bowl from Ikea, the salad bowl. I like my Fruit Loops, Dr. Anderson, with my milk, and I like to eat my Fruit Loops when my wife go to bed, and I eat my Fruit Loops and my cornflakes. I like my cornflakes frosted, and I just let my milk just sit on there, and I like the sugar to go to the bottom, and then when the sugar go to the bottom, I just pick up my bowl, and I just start drinking it, let the sugar, and you know, I got diabetes, Dr. Anderson, so I can't be drinking all that sugar, but that's why your wife ain't telling you she got $5 million in the account, because you sitting here playing video games late at night eating cereal. Come on, come on. If the man can't figure out financially how to direct his house, how you think your woman gonna let you know when she come up on some bread? She ain't telling you. The black man has to have a plan financially for his family. We the head. The Bible said, yo, you're supposed to be the head, not the tail. How you gonna be the head and you don't know how to invest? What kind of trickery is, confoonery is, tomfoolery is that? That's crazy, man. It's almost as bad as brothers driving down Boat Rock and waiting for the white man to come and cut the daggone trees when you got a chainsaw in the back of your car. Don't get me started. HSA accounts. <laughs> Let's keep this on the board before Jamal get mad at me. You know I only gave you an hour, man. Health savings accounts. This is very important. Why? Because I'm of the notion that traditional insurance is not enough. Traditional insurance is not going to fix you when you have bad reactions to the COVID vaccine. Traditional insurance ain't going to fix you when you got back problems. Traditional insurance ain't going to fix you when you got eye problems. Why is this? Because the ophthalmologists and the dermatologists and some forms of chiropractic care are not taken care of in traditional insurance plans. And if they do, they only give you about $500 after you pay in the $1,500, $2,500, $3,500 a month. So you're still coming up short. What does the 40 Up Club do, Dr. Anderson? Well. The HSA account. The HSA account is the health savings account. If I call Aetna and say, hey, Aetna, I need to get some new glasses. I want to get some frames. Well, Aetna is only going to pay for the glasses, the lenses. They're not going to pay for the frame because I'm not going to go to the little box that they give you that you can pick from and you got to stay under $300. These frames is about $1,500 with the lenses because I got a weird prescription. I got astigmatism. So I got to spend money on my eyewear. So Here's the solution. The solution is through the health savings account, a self-directed health savings account that is, I make contributions annually for 2020, it's $7,000. For 2021, it's another $7,000. That's combined for $14,000. And if I was an individual, or I am an, I'm a family member, I have a family, but if I am an individual, my contribution for 2020 is 3,500 and 2021 is 3,500. So it's either $7,000 respectfully if you're an individual, if you got a family, $14,000. Question, class, what can you do with the $14,000? Well, I told you earlier about my strategy, right? I don't invest in the hood. I go straight to Johns Creek. I love Johns Creek. Ooh, I love. John's Creek because when them white people come out they be like man what are these Negroes doing up here and we be pulling up in a Mercedes Benz Sprinter that we bought from a tax sale and we be jumping out acting like monkeys talking about yeah we own this and white folks like to come out and walk their dogs and see what's going on what's all this commotion these black people coming out here they got bulletproof vests on and they in a Mercedes Benz Sprinter with drivers what's going on here and we buy their property we buy their property for a hundred dollars in fact I own Zero Niblick Drive in Johns Creek. Look it up, because it's under contract right now for $62,500. That's right, class. For $62,500, I spent $100, but I got $62,500 coming back into the HSA tax-free. Can you say reparations, class? Can you say equity? Okay. Can you say economic justice? That's economic justice, right? So. The last thing that I want to give to you, the final product, is called the ESA. ESA is very important. It stands for Educational Savings Account. Why is it? <laughs> Thank you, Fonzie. I appreciate you, my brother. My brother Fonzie. You got to love him. God just sent him. He came out of nowhere. We well, didn't come out of nowhere. He's always been around, but God sent him to me directly. So the Educational Savings Account is very important. 
and all jokes aside, uh, this year has been a challenging year for everyone. Um, but however, in my household, um, a number of teachers came down with the COVID, and of course, we weren't sending the kids to the school. It was like, hey, we got to figure this out. So the wife and I put our heads together, and we worked on trying to figure out what we would do, and we rented out some space from the epicenter, and we had to get a curriculum from a Becca, and we had to find a tutor to, or a facilitator to facilitate the educational components of the Abeka curriculum. This is a $50,000 nut that just popped out of the sky. $50,000 to be able to pay somebody every month and pay for the facility and pay for the curriculum to be able to teach my kids so they don't get COVID. Now, in any other situation, I wouldn't have been able to afford that. But because we actively invest through the kids' ESA accounts, the children, <laughs> The children were able to pay for their own education. The children pay every week the facilitator. The children pay for the curriculum. The children pay for the rent at the epicenter. That's cold-blooded. If I would have known that, I'd have been like, man, 25 years ago, <laughs> I wouldn't have done a few things, you understand? <laughs> things wasn't always as good as they are right now. I'll tell you, man. I got into some situations. The final thing that I want to leave with you guys today are tax credits. I see a lot of people buying into esoteric strategies. You see these brothers on the corner, and I don't want to knock them, but the Hebrew Israelites, I, they, they just got all kind of notions about, well, you see, Brother Anderson, you know, we shouldn't have to pay taxes, you understand, because uh, our lineage traces back to Sacagawean, you know, and Sacagawean was the tracker on the Lewis and Clark expedition, Hotep, my brother. So you understand, since I'm kin to Sacagawean, you understand, and the man found the Louisiana Purchase but didn't give us our justice due, you know, I, I own half of the West Coast, shout it. I own all of that because because I'm kin to Sacagawean, and we ain't getting no justice. So because we ain't getting no justice, ha, I figure I ain't going to pay no taxes. And guess what? Wesley Snipes bought into that strategy. I'm in Ra, Wesley Snipes bought into that strategy when he was the hottest thing going, saved Marvel from going into bankruptcy, Blade made like $3 billion, and he ain't paid no taxes because some Hebrew Israelites told him he was kin to Sacagawean. Everybody that's used that strategy, from Wesley Snipes, to Ronald Isley, to, to the, um, the Fugees, what's the girl name? Lauren Hill, they got Lauren Hill coming to JFK at the airport. Miss Hill, can you come here for a minute? Put her in cuffs, took her to jail. They was like, Miss Hill, can you tell us for nine years why you haven't paid royalties on any of the Fugees music? Because I'm kin to Sacagawean and I don't have to pay. They put the cuff on her, on her little tracker, on the, you know what I'm talking about, that little big old tracker thing on her ankle and sent her down the road for three years, so it's very real. So my question to you is, class, why are we using esoteric strategies? Why, why are we doing this? When we can use code, if we could go to the screen right quick, this is probably one of the most powerful codes that I've ever seen in the United States tax code. It's US tax code section 934, 934. Google this. It's the USVI Economic Development Authority tax credit. USVI, US Virgin Islands, this ain't some <laughs> Cayman Islands or Isles of Man strategy, this is right here, US soil, it's a territory, but it's still US soil. And you can, get this, pay, if your business resides, where the money reside, where the money reside, where the money, 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 money reside. If your business resides <laughs> in the US Virgin Islands, you paying 4% if you live there, but if your business resides there, you pay only 10% to the USVI. You gotta hire some people, you gotta have a car there, you gotta have a residence. But get this, if you're doing 10, 20, 30 million dollars and you a small business here and this thing with Biden goes through and they gotta pay 43% on capital gains, you might wanna look at <laughs> where the money resides <laughs> and going down to St. Thomas <laughs> and take an exercise in that uh, section 934 US tax code and you could tell them New Albions that I told you to do that because that's real and that ain't no Wesley Snipes strategy. All right? <laughs> okay. We must invest in real estate. Oh, brother, here come brother Polite and uh, what's the brother's name? Uh, Umar Johnson. Hey, you didn't have to say all that, Dr. Anderson. <laughs> Before we get out of here, I want to leave y'all with some real strategies. I don't want to just get on the set 
and drop some bombs about information some people are following, some people are not following. Hopefully, the beauty of this technology is that this will live on YouTube forever. Even when I'm gone, you can go back, press rewind, and see what I was talking about on this day. Because if you go back and you watch the 2019 presentation, I actually predicted, and it wasn't me, it was God working through me, so we gotta acknowledge that. But I predicted a year to date that that stock market would crash and that it would crash over 10,000 points. And go, if you don't believe me, go to YouTube, type in Dr. David M. Anderson Sr., Dr. Jamal Bryant, New Birth, Opportunity Zones, and look at the 1259 and just let it play for about five minutes and you will hear that prediction that the, the, at the time, I predicted that the stock market will drop 10,000 points and it did to the date that I called it right here on this platform. Yes, so sir. these presentations live on for a long time because there's a lot happening right now as we channel this information to you. I leave you with 10 reasons to invest in Atlanta real estate. This is 10 reasons. Please get a piece of paper because this ain't even me talking right now. <laughs> this God is connected, it's coming. 10 reasons why you need to invest in Atlanta real estate. Number one, the last time I came here, we talked about the Mercedes-Benz Dome being completed. It's completed, they're having games, and it ain't for the Falcons. It's definitely for these Spanish people playing this football because that place seats 110,000. Where are the 110,000 people gonna go after COVID is over, now that they've relaxed the laws? Where do the 110 people, 110,000 people go? Please tell me, cause I wanna know right now. Where do the 110,000 people go? They can't go to the hotel, oh now. Because the hotel only has 150 doors. The Hilton and the Reverb is going up right now while I talk. Where do the 110,000 people go? Black people get a loan right now, invest right now. I'm just saying, invest right now. Because it's there, it's an opportunity. It, the the Mercedes-Benz dome is creating what's called a dome effect. Arthur Blank is creating a dome effect. And so now, because there's a dome effect, we have to figure out a way to participate on the ripple, on the overage. We're not just going to sit there and let Margaritaville get all the bread. And, oh, I know, Dr. Anderson, Hilton is moving to your own Marmata in Gaines Hall at Morris Brown College. Yo, that's cool and all, Hilton, and I appreciate that. And thank you to Morris Brown for allowing that transaction to go. But is Hilton playing ground rents to Morris Brown College? Is Hilton having a hospitality program and bringing in people like Robert F. Smith or Michael V. Roberts or uh, Donahue Peoples or Robert uh, Johnson from BET, other black hotel owners, to have the NAB Hood Conference at that hotel at a historically black college and university? Oh, nah, they not doing all of that. They not getting down like that. They're gonna have a hotel there. Morris Brown might get a little bit of bread, but that hotel is there solely because of what I'm talking about with this dome effect. That's beachfront property. Don't come down here and try to play us for stupid. We know better than that. But I get it. I'm not trying to start nothing. I'm thankful that they even thought enough about the school to do such, but we got to understand how these deals go down. The Gulch Project. We talked about the Hard Rock. The reverb is there right now. It's open for business. They got a rooftop. They got parties going on. The, the, the Hard Rock understands where the money resides. Morris Brown College, like I just stated, the Hilton is coming. The Hilton understands where the money resides. They're coming to Gaines Hall, right across from our old dormitory. Friendship Baptist Church. The oldest church, one of the oldest churches in black America took $20 million, 19.5 to be exact, to move across the street. They have gone into business. I won't name the hotel because I don't want to mess the deal up. I don't know if my attorney has finished the deal or not. Nate won't say yes or no, but it's okay, Nate. We know who the people are. But Friendship Baptist Church, is getting busy at the old tower site. They know where the money resides. The Beltline project. The Beltline, and we talked about this, about um, Rob, Ryan Gravel coming up with his thesis statement that uh, uh, infrastructure promotes economic development. Why is the Beltline going straight through MLK? I mean, there's brothers with white t-shirts right now on the corner of MLK and Laurie. They there right now. <laughs> They're going to be there when you're watching this thing on YouTube. They there right now, hustling the hard and the soft 
in the belt line. I'm talking about white folks is walking Bouviers and Mass Tees. You know the Bouvier, the big old dog, and, and they be doing this right here, trying to hold the dog? They doing that right now on MLK. That's crazy to me, man. I'm like, yo, this is nuts. What's really happening? The belt line is here. That's what's happening. 10 reasons to invest in Atlanta. We got lucky. I won't even say it was my gangster proclivity. We got lucky. God was shining on us one day. And we were able to procure an entire block, I can't make this up, an entire block in front of the Beltline off of MLK. But let me tell you where the money really resides. Follow me on this walk, if I may, before we get out of here. Airbnb, you know them. A lot of my homies is making money on Airbnb. I think Devin and Rob getting about five, six, seven Gs a month on Airbnb. Oh, Doc, don't put it out there like that. Doc, you know, we don't want everybody to know our business. Man, celebrate that. Airbnb is getting brothers paid. And Airbnb has chosen, listen to me, class, hear this, hear this, hear this. Airbnb has chosen to move their world headquarters, world, world headquarters to the corner. Are you ready? Of Chappelle and Boone. Now, if you know where Chappelle and Boone is, <laughs> they don't got no teeth in their mouth on Chappelle and Boone, okay? I'm just being straight up 100. They on the corner on Chappelle and Boone with no teeth. And Airbnb has decided to move their world headquarters, world headquarters, to the corner of Boone and Chappelle. I'm not done. As we continue to go down Chappelle, Dr. Anderson, it ain't Chappelle, it's Chapel. I get it, I understand. But as we continue to go straight on Chappelle, it dead ends into the new world headquarters for Microsoft, Mr. Vaccination himself. In fact, they talking about changing the Bankhead Martyr Station to Vaccination Station. Oh, Dr. Anderson, you ain't have to do that. That's wrong. Bankhead, ain't nothing come out of Bankhead but D-Rock and that, that dance that he had Michael Jackson doing, the Bankhead bounce. Ain't nothing come out of Bankhead. But now, on the corner of Bankhead and Chappelle, oh, here we come. Well, T.I. came out of Bankhead. Killer Mike came out of Bankhead. Come on, Dr. Anderson. Your boy, Bill Gates, has bought a 175-acre campus on Bankhead and Chappelle. Where's the Chinaman? <laughs> Yo, Microsoft is in the hood. And we in the hood at the gas station, the Chevron across the street, watching all of this go down. There's dope boys selling dope across the street right now at that gas station, and they're not investing their money in any of those houses that are around there. Do you know what's going to happen in the 30318 and the 30314 zip codes class? Do you know what's going to happen? It's going to be crazy. People are going, the Airbnb surge is going to happen. You ever try to get Uber, you know, and you, you, you during a surge, a ride that should cost you like $7, winds up being $107? Well, that's what's getting ready to happen in 30318 or 30318 and 30314, especially when that FIFA Cup comes here in 2026, because everybody from South America is going to be here, and it, it only holds 110,000 people. They're going to have a half a million people partying in that gulch. Where are them people going to stay? That one weekend, they're predicting that all of this new infrastructure that's going up will be paid for in that one weekend during the FIFA Cup 2026. They're not worried about no loans outstanding to no banks. Come on, man. The Bellwood Rock Quarry, that's where they filmed Wakanda and the FIFA World Cup. These are the 10 reasons why you should dump, well, Dr. Anderson, I hear you telling me where to put, how to get my money off the market and put it in the self-directed IRA, and then, and then you want me to take it out the self-directed IRA and go down there off a of boom and off a of bankhead and put my money, yes, that's what I'm saying, yes, do that. Well, I'm not telling you to do that because that would be considered giving financial advice over the social media. So I'm educating you, and I'm just saying what I would do. In fact, not what I would do, what I am doing. So I'm just sharing with you what I would do, not what necessarily you should do. You need to talk to your CPAs and to your own financial advisor from Smith Barnett and Edward Jones. I know you black people over there on uh, Boat Rock know all about that. All right, partnership opportunities, if we could put that on the board. I see there Jamal with three months ahead. Um, and then we're, we're open for business. You know, if you heard something tonight that lets you know that we've really done our homework, 
that we really understand the, the products that are necessary to be able to raise the capital to go in there and, and, and acquire the land. If you, if you understand that we have an understanding about you know, real estate and, and investing in real estate and, and creating these opportunities, if you, if you understand that, I, I am willing to meet with, with you. Um, we have a 30-minute Zoom call that we set up. And, and some of y'all be like, I, I don't want no Zoom call. I, I want to meet directly with Anderson. I got some money, and I need to talk. I don't want to talk to no receptionist and no broker, no abstract. I want to talk to Anderson. I need to find out how to put my grandmother left me some money. I need to figure out how to buy me one of them hotels down there in Morris Brown. I need to talk to Anderson. So we social distancing. You got to set it up. Make sure you don't got the COVID. You got to you know, do all those types of things. Um, and we're meeting on Zoom. Uh, and we're meeting with folks to be able to explain, you know, how to structure this. It ain't that we stupid. It ain't that we broke. Clearly we not. I just put it on the board that we have a trillion dollar, $1.4 trillion net worth as our own, on our own cognizance. If we work together with our Asian brothers and sisters and our Hispanic brothers and sisters and our Native American brothers and sisters, we're at $4 trillion. We are the richest. Melanated people are the richest. Hear me. We have the most money available. The challenge is redirecting that money. Why do we not own? You know, the Bible says, and, and, and I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a Bible scholar, right? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still learning about the book and learning about how important the book is. But the book is very clear on, on what it is that we're to do. And it says to possess. It says possess the land and to further subdue it. That's what it says. That's a mandate. It ain't no joke. It ain't no nothing to be like, you know, God, I don't know if I want to possess today. You know, God, give me the abundant life. God, help me, Lord. Give me, the, you know, give me, the, give me the riches. But God's telling us to possess the land and to further subdue it. But God, I, you know, I just trust in you, Jesus. I, I trust in the Lord always. I've been tithing, Lord. But, but God said to possess the land and to further subdue it. It's a mandate. <laughs> but Lord, if you just would just give me this car right here, I, I promise I'll possess the land. Don't be like my mama, people. My mama pays $1,500 a month. And I love my mama. I know it's Mother's Day. It's not cool for you to be talking about me at the church. You know, I see these things and the women of the church be calling me, telling me you be talking about me. Mama, I love you. But my mama pays $1,500 every month. She's been in the same spot since 1971. That's 50 years of my mama paying rent to Albanians and Jews and people that don't look like her. That's over a million five, mama. And she loves the Lord. She loves God. I like that song. I love God. You don't love God? Boy, what's wrong with you? Mama don't go like that. But if my mom would have invested $1.5 million in a Roth IRA in 1971, how much cash would she have accessible to now to leave to her grandchildren when she expires? We paying rent. We're not possessing the land. And we sure, and the tornadoes show us, <laughs> we're not subduing it. I love y'all. I thank y'all for listening. I thank you to New Birth. And we will see you soon. <laughs>